Hello. How are you? Hey. Sorry, I'm really late. produced a lot of food in here but we've sort of converted it more into a food forest or a, a forest garden so you'll see that in spots there's uh, some chard growing this was broad beans through there um, uh, this is the herb spiral here at the bottom of the stairs so we could get herbs and that sort of thing and uh, it's just a whole series of little fruit trees but uh, most of this here is covered with sweet potato, um, which has just sort of collapsed with the dry. But, you know, there's some there. Normally all through here is, is all sweet potato. Um, various herbs and other trees and that sort of thing. And in little pockets you've got, these are some um, uh, recurring uh, leeks. So they, uh, they just keep coming up all the time. So we've always got leeks coming. They're reseeding themselves? Yeah. Well, they, they, what they do is they sprout from the, from the bottom as well. Oh, yeah. Um, if and, they die uh, and then sp they sprout again. That's right, yeah. Some Thai in, basil in, over there. In through here, we've got um, uh, worm farms. So the, the, the worm farms have uh, all sorts of things in it and as they break down um, the the nutrient goes out into the garden around it yeah and you just have some holes at the bottom yeah yeah underneath is all holes and they they go there and you'll you'll see them sort of spread throughout the gardens um, chickens sort of in the zone one two um, We've got a lot of other chickens and seven ones. Here we've uh, um, what we've done here is we, we've put a lot of rock to absorb the heat during the day and radiate at night. Um, but we've also put in uh, a, a sun trap there. Um, and the, the white tank kind of reflects, uh, the light coloured tank reflects light. So you, you get like a microclimate in here that takes you towards being subtropical. So we can grow things like bananas and pawpaws and mangoes and guavas and things like that. Great. So you're creating a little subtropical oasis. Yeah, in a, in a, um, war we're warm temperate. We're just, we're just changing the changing the um, zone a little bit. So this is banana circle there. Great. So that's quite a, Contains quite a deep the... hole there with a worm farm in the middle of it. And, um, uh, you know, that that's sort of the, the bananas all feed off uh, uh, that the stuff breaking down in the middle there. Great.
this is my bee shed. This is not for the bees, it's for me to protest my bees. But I, I've lost all my bees now because of the Varroa uh, DPI. I've come and killed all my bees. So what is it? What What's it? The Varroa mite. Ah, uh, a we, mite. Yeah, the Varroa got into it, some hives in Newcastle and it's expanded. So they're, they're killing all the bees in in the area. That's, That's gnarly. That's just a frame of honey that was sitting there and I left the door open. The sun came in and it all fell down. Into it all there. melted in there. Mm. Good. Yeah, so this is just where I, you know, I've got the spinner and that sort of thing. And, uh, normally those, the doors open up there and all that slide in here, so. Yeah, of course. But this is now... Um, I really like the way you guys converting the... the containers the, and uh, uh, chestnuts, macadamias and almonds. Great. But we've since can sort of filled it out with, with other things, you know, you've got little guavas growing there, lots of herbs as an under, uh, as a, a ground cover. This is tansy. Tansy, you use tansy as a ground cover. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, to, to repel ants and things like that that spread scale. Mm, um, what a yummy herb. Yeah, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of other things in there. A few legumes. This, this is turmeric growing in there you know yeah it's, great. It's, it's looking a bit sad at the what's moment. what's this legume yeah yeah that's just a little uh i think it's the uh in the inca fam uh, uh, indigo family indigo but it's um uh just a, a little a little um uh, nitrogen fixer that uh, sort of pops up and goes down again and that sort of thing yeah but the main structure this is carob here Carob, wow, carob. amazing. A, yeah, there's a bit of there's a bit of carob in here as well as uh, this is the pecans, of course. But we won't we won't get any. Uh, oh, there's little little nuts there. We yeah. might get some. All of these acacias here, they're all for chop and drop. Yeah. So you can see we chop chop them pretty savagely and and spread it down as mulch. Um, this is the this is the mulch under here. Oh, you. that's good stuff. That's great. Yeah, so it's, you know, with the sweet potatoes and the strawberries growing underneath and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, pretty soon the pumpkins and that'll be sort of going crazy in here as well. Um, so it gets to be a very productive little area. Great. Yeah, they stood on it. Oh, they love it. My friend was telling me he, he, he used to kill them on the tree, so then he would spread it, the dead. The yeah, dead yeah, making a bug juice out of yeah. it. Yeah, that, that works. We did that with a, a red shoulder bug, but I hadn't. That was put in by uh, Slow Foods. Slow Foods Hunter Valley got a little grant from the government. Oh, really? Communities Environment Program, and they they built this um, little bush tucker garden. The government sent some people out to, to build it. No, no. Well, the government <laughs> gave Slow Foods some money, and okay. Slow Foods got the people out. Well, the Slow Foods people, mm. including me um, and Kate, uh, we we built it. Wow, what is this? That's a mint bush. It's, oh it's one, my one of the god. Mint that's awesome. <laughs> That's some stuff we want to grow. And this is uh, Thermida uh, kangaroo grass. And this mm. is what they make flour out of, um, you know, to, to make a, a bread, sort of a bread biscuity thing. Ah, okay, it's like a grain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. That's so it's like the, the, native, um, the native flour yeah. for the originals. Yeah. That's awesome. The Dianella has uh, usually has little purple berries on it that you eat, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a fair bit of that in there. Um, yeah, it's of course, quite... the more common things are the lily pillies. Yeah. But the, along there, looking very thirsty, is uh, the native raspberry. Yeah. Um, you know, they're fairly nondescript little. What's the the one on the ground? 
Which one? This one. Just that, that's salt bush. Salt bush, yes. Mm. They're looking great. Mm. Just almost bought a tree yesterday in Bunnings, but I don't really feel like buying any plants at Bunnings. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Hamish, the, who was here, has delivered uh, biodynamic preparations. So, we're biodynamic, and uh, he, uh, he makes preparations in. On, uh, down on the south coast as well and he brings them here and uh, he does education everywhere on biodynamics Great. and when someone orders some preparations he sends me through an invoice and I post out the preparations. Great. So that's what uh, he was dropping off some more preps. So this is our goose house, this is where the geese stay at night and uh, the idea is that the geese do a lot of pooing and when we're making compost we clean it out and yeah and that becomes material for the compost amazing mm. but they're off uh, so this is our market garden our mandala market garden i don't know if you've seen the little video on yeah the, on the thing. yeah that's how how i got uh, the first impression <laughs> So, you know, we, we propagate, when, when we're fully functioning, we propagate all our seedlings. Uh, about 50-50 of uh, seeds collected and seeds brought in. So here's the mouser. Yay! <laughs> uh, in the drought, we, we run these wicking beds. Yes. Uh, they're mostly strawberries now, but... Uh, um, we, we did raise all our greens. When, when we had the last really dry period, we raised all of our greens in, in these bathtub wicking beds. And yeah. They, they work really well. It's amazing what you can do with an old um, bathtub. Growing tomatoes with beans, great. So, uh, you know, the, the beans are fixing nitrogen and the tomatoes are going up and they sort of, in time, they all intertwine and... It's a very productive thing, you know, with a, a planting of marigolds or um, basil yeah. um, as, as companions. Great. Uh, and these areas outside of the mandalas are for sort of longer term stuff. That's uh, uh, potatoes in there. Yeah. Um, marigolds, tomatoes, beans, basil made a big move towards more perennial crops uh, and less annuals yeah um, just just to, to build the resilience of the garden yeah that's you know, pear tree it's full huh it's full full of pears yeah and a lot have fallen off too but you you can't quite see it but we we keep the bottom half of the tree We've actually espaliered it so the branches come out. Yeah. And we keep it trimmed to there, and and we we net the bottom usually for um, a fruit fly. Yeah. Uh, and the the top, the fruit on the top of it is for the birds and the bats and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So we get to keep this bottom bit and you, you're they, sharing yeah. sharing half. And half. the other thing it does is is it create shade in the summer yeah. and uh, drops all its leaves and the Candala system works really well for us um, you know the ducks patrol in here and they eat all the snails and the chickens we control them because the terrible scratches outside of where you want them but uh, you know they, they, they should be moved onto there now every two weeks we move them and uh and when after they've moved they've sort of eaten all the bugs and pooed and scratched and that sort of thing and so we just plant into the is it a big effort to move them no not really uh, i used to do it on my own when i was younger i, I used to just um uh, pick it up the roost it's a ladder that goes across the top there you just put your shoulders under there and lift it up because it's all just made of conduit. Do you want me to do it? Hmm? You can move it oh, on no, there. No, that's all right. I can do it. Huh? I can do it. <laughs> I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got the seeds 
in the one castings soaking soaking all the bacteria from the worm castings 